During 2012, the United Nations Program for the Environment, UNEP, entrusted the Apple Process of Bahia Blanca and the Regional Bahia Blanca Faculty of the National Technological University through its Process Safety and Emergency Response Study Group, the JESPRE, by its local acronym, with organizing the regional meeting on experiences with implementing Apple methodology in Latin America, which was held on November 20th and 21st, 2013, in the city of Bahia Blanca, Argentina. Activity began on Tuesday, November 19th, when special guests representing Brazil, Peru, Colombia, Chile and the United States were welcomed, as well as participants from Argentina's industrial zones located in the Zarate Campana area, the ports of San Lorenzo, San Martín and Rosario, and Rio Tercero City, together with officials of the Matanza Riachuelo Basin Authority, the ACUMAR, by its local acronym. At an opening dinner, these participants were given a breakdown of the activities scheduled for the following two days. Official activities began on Wednesday 20th, when a large-scale field simulation exercise was organized at the Solvay Indupa firm. Through a communications link with Paris, France, Elisa Tonda, head of the UNEP Business and Industry Unit, gave a presentation of the regional experience with the Apple project. The Dean of the Bahia Blanca Regional Faculty of the National Technological University, Dr. Lilberto Ercoli, and the Industrial Director of the firm Solva Indupa, Engineer Juan Racosta, took charge of welcoming the special guests and the representatives of intermediate institutions, government agencies and educators, as well as local residents, totaling some 120 participants. The simulation was broadcast live on special screens set up in the auditorium, filmed by a team of 15 including directors, cameramen and production assistants, using a TV link-up. The simulation hypothesis was a chlorine gas leak from a 10-inch flange in the company's chlorine plant, using yellow tinted vapor to simulate the gas. It is important to point out that during the event, the industrial plant was operating normally and special structures were installed exclusively for the emergency simulation. Internal sensors detected the leak, which was then confirmed by sector operators, who immediately advised the supervisor on duty and he in turn asked the control room to activate the plant's emergency siren. The emergency was initially classified at Level 1 on the TERP Technological Emergency Response Plan. Thereupon, the 911 emergency service was alerted, stipulating, however, that it was a simulation. And through own systems, the Ingeniero White Volunteer Fire Brigade was summoned, arriving presently with a vehicle specially conditioned for dangerous materials, plus a light vehicle with a portable air tank used for recharging the self-contained breathing units. After preliminary actions had been taken by plant and emergency brigade staff, the size of the leak increased, activating the outline chlorine detectors and causing the emergency to be recategorized up to level 2. This emergency level involved summoning the city's response teams, activating the community sirens as preventive measure and isolating the local educational facilities, as could be observed live on the specially located screens. The 911 Communications Control Room then used the Emergency Communications Network, the so-called Alerta, to put all the firms within the industrial zone on alert. Radio Nacional, the official Bahia Blanca Apple Process radio station, then broadcast the communique reporting the start of the simulation to the whole community on both AM and FM. The on-site committee, 
consisting of the Civil Defense Director commanding the emergency response and the fire chiefs of the different squads, a supervisor of the municipal urban guards in charge of controlling transit in the emergency area, and coordinators from the police department and the executive technical committee, as well as the medical coordinator, the head of the 911 Emergency Communications Center, and a Radio Nacional radio station representative to issue the communiques, all met in a specially conditioned unit provided by the Volunteer Fire Brigade of General Daniel Serri. Others attending the meeting were the company head of safety and the production manager of the chlorine unit, who provided details of the steps taken by the plant. The plant fire brigade members acted jointly at the emergency site. Due to the aggressive nature of the product, Level A insulated hammer suits were worn by the firefighters, washing contaminants off the same as each returned from the site. Meanwhile, within the on-site committee, the Cameo Marplot software data on product features and areas at risk were analyzed. Controls carried out through the 911 center confirmed the confinement status of the neighboring firms Dow Argentina and Air Liquide as well as the local educational facilities, the Municipal Child Development Center and Kindergartens 7625 and 905. A series of communiques were issued by Radio Nacional radio station apprising the whole community of simulation developments. The leak was successfully contained after a number of minutes, but one person had already been affected. The on-site committee alerted the municipal hospital and a local private hospital through the emergency communications network on the off chance that the affected person might be sent there. Once the coordinator of the executive technical committee had confirmed the absence of chlorine through the outline sensors and company representatives had declared the leak sealed, and once this status had been confirmed by the heads of the fire brigades, the simulation was declared ended. Continuing with the activity program on the afternoon of the same day, talks were given by different local and foreign experts. The topics dealt with were the vision for Apple in Latin America and the Caribbean, a presentation of publications showing the lessons that had been gained and the experiences that had taken place in Colombia and in the city of Bahia Blanca. Later, an open discussion workshop session took place with the active participation of all persons attending the simulation, so as to inform them on the opportunities for improving the dissemination of Apple among other countries in the region. Later, the strategic communications program prepared for Apple by Yablanca was set forth, ending with a description of the JESPRE and the activities it is carrying out for the local Apple process, such as updating the results analysis file and the emergency response plan according to Norm 1600 of the NFPA. A fellowship dinner was held that evening and was attended not only by special guests, but also by local government officials, leaders of intermediate institutions and corporate representatives forming part of the Bahia Blanca Apple process. Gifts were distributed among the foreign guests and the evening was enlivened by a group of young tango musicians. On Thursday, the day started with a brief visit to the premises of the on-site committee, a specially equipped facility to control the quality of the environment within the area of the petrochemical complex. Afterwards, the group moved to the assembly hall of the Ingeniero White Volunteer Fire Brigade, where there was a ceremony marking the end of the NFPA program activity, My First Steps in Fire Prevention, aimed at preparatory level school children. This program teaches children how to prevent a fire and respond to it through eight basic modes of behavior. Using specially designed games directed by two Bahia Blanca Apple Process female trainers, the children were able to show their parents, teachers, community members and the event participants the expertise they had acquired. 
During this activity, two projectors and screens were raffled among the seven participating schools to the unmitigated delight of the lucky winners. Another programmed activity consisted of carrying out a confinement drill inside a preparatory level educational facility. This drill was received with interest by the guests, who remarked on the degree of coordination and order observed by all of the students, teachers and auxiliary staff of the school, as well as the efficient window sealing devices. Closing the morning activities on this second day, and invited by the authorities of the Ingeniero Whiteport, the guests were taken on a tour of the Bay Estuary, so as to acquire a different view of the whole industrial port area. During the afternoon, on the premises of the Bahia Blanca Regional Faculty of the National Technological University, the representative of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, and engineer Peter Gattuso, a Cameo software expert, gave lengthy talks on the application, management, challenges and improvements involved in the Cameo Mar Plot Aloha program package. Afterwards, the representative of the JESPRE and the leader of the project for the adaptation and translation to Spanish of the Cameo Marplot software talked about the progress made and challenges perceived within the translation project, as well as the advantages of using this tool and its future development. And in the day's activity, there was a question and answer session among the participants. Exhausted after the intense three-day activity program, but highly satisfied by the experiences gained, all of those present expressed their satisfaction at the degree of progress made in implementing the Bahia Blanca Apple process, as well as stressing the importance of the backup given by the National Technological University and expressed a commitment to participate by further developing their experiences in their hometowns. Eh, la verdad que me llevo una grata impresión de la organización y de la eficiencia y la pulcritud con la que se ha llevado todo este trabajo. Quiero felicitar a todos los, los organizadores en la persona de Daniel. El mejor honor que yo le puedo rendir al trabajo que ustedes realizan es de que realizar todos mis esfuerzos para que mañana mismo, cuando regrese a Perú, tratar de, de alguna manera de contribuir y apoyar la iniciativa de replicar este trabajo también en mi país. Días antes de venir tuvimos una experiencia bastante penosa en un incendio de, de productos pesticidas eh, y lamento no haber tenido la oportunidad de participar en este seminario antes porque otros hubieran sido mis ojos al analizar esa, ese siniestro. No había tenido la oportunidad anterior de ver una aplicación en terreno de la misma y muy grata es la sorpresa de lo comprometida que está la comunidad de Bahía Blanca eh, en, en este proceso, sobre todo ante temas tan álgidos, sobre todo hoy en día eh, lo que respecta a la convivencia de la comunidad con industrias que revisten un riesgo importante. Eh, el compromiso de toda la comunidad, las autoridades, con un mismo foco, una misma visión que es eh, minimizar los riesgos, y responder ante situaciones de emergencia que siempre obviamente están, son posibles que existan, eh, de un profesionalismo increíble, que en la enseñanza desde niños, desde pequeños, a conocer los riesgos bajo diferentes niveles de dificultad, reviste un éxito importante. Eh, creo que lo que hoy vi, eh, el tema del de simulacro en las escuelas, eh, la, todo el trabajo con la comunidad, el tema de los primeros pasos, con los chicos de la escuela, es algo que yo nunca lo había visto, no me imaginé que existía algo así, y creo que es algo que debemos copiar, copiar en el buen sentido en muchos lugares de nuestro país. Y yo por supuesto me llevo el, el, el deber, el deber de poder hacer esto, replicarlo en Campana Sárate y en el comité nuestro, porque creo que es algo que ustedes han logrado y que es un ejemplo para, para el país entero, ¿no? o sea, para todo nuestro país. Eh, me gustó muchísimo la parte del simulacro, 
Eh, creo que la coordinación que hubo entre las empresas y, y todas las instituciones que estaban dentro de la que es la comuna es muy valiosa y es, es replicable, ojalá fuera replicable en, en Chile, específicamente en las zonas industriales. Eh, y la otra parte que me llamó mucho la atención y que también es, es, es como modelo a seguir es la parte con los niños, el trabajo que se hace con los niños, cómo los niños están concientizados con todo este trabajo de... De, de lo que son las emergencias, de cómo reaccionar, el tema de alarmas, etc. Eh, me voy con las mejores ideas, con las mejores experiencias y contactos para poder replicar eh, los ejemplos exitosos de la aplicación del programa Apple. Eh, nosotros en Colombia tenemos el programa Apple en Cartagena y en Barranquilla y queremos expandirlo a otras ciudades del país y eh, estas experiencias eh, son perfectamente aplicables. Mm, me llamó mucho la atención lo bien organizado que tenían el simulacro eh, y me gustaría poder ver qué de, de evaluación y de corrección van a, a aplicar y actualizar el, el plan. Eh, la experiencia con los niños me pareció muy buena. En Colombia nosotros tenemos algunos ejemplos de trabajo con comunidad y con escuelas eh, también muy cercano, pero creo que este va a ser otro ejemplo muy valioso que vamos a poder eh, aplicar y llevar a Colombia. Eh, la, la posibilidad de participar en estos eventos donde las empresas, en este caso del Polo de Bahía Blanca, se muestran abiertamente eh, mostrando sus, sus planes de emergencia, eh, sus eh, planes de respuesta, su actuación, su interacción con las autoridades es realmente muy enriquecedor y siempre brinda oportunidades de mejora para los planes que eh, la empresa dispone. Eh, a la vez también eh, quis, eh, quiero felicitar por el programa eh, que tienen eh, con los niños, los primeros pasos, es algo eh, sumamente importante que eh, se ponga foco en la niñez, eh, porque bien como decían Hoy eh, las, las personas involucradas en ese programa, eh, los niños de hoy serán los jóvenes de mañana y los futuros padres de niños que retroalimentarán ese, ese tipo de programas y, y van a crear una cultura de prevención, que todo eso es el objetivo de este tipo de programas.